Welcome, all of you feral fiends, to this insidious episode of Speak of the Devil Presents Never Have I Ever. Take a moment to collect your liberally poured libation of choice. Settle back into your seats, being mindful of your lumbar support, and prepare yourselves for this infernally enlightening and hilariously entertaining program. Now please put your hands together for your devilish host, Reverend Campbell. Thank you, thank you, Jeff. And you're here. So that's just uh, perfect. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, thank you all you're so welcome. much for joining live. Um, all right. So we're being joined today, as you can see, by Sanus Aaron Lynn. How are you, my dear? Hello. Uh, are you ready for this? I'm ready. There's going to be some revealing stories. I'm ready. I don't know if it's bag of dick stories, but it's got to be on par. Yeah, I don't know if I can top the bag of dick. We'll, we'll Which Simony uh, put up a pretty high dick bag bar. So it's going to be hard <laughs> to reach over that. Uh, Jeff Bowling, we're like Jeff Bowling. How you doing, man? I am good, man. Thanks for having me on. I'm stoked because not only are you announcing the intro and outro, but you're also going to be sharing your twisted life experiences, hopefully. Yes. yes. So that's going to be awesome. But it's not just the, us. The three. sorted path that led me to being a game show announcer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, yeah, usually that, that, that begins and ends with uh, strangers uh, in an alley, <laughs> you know, sexual <laughs> favors and such. So hopefully it was a different path for you than, uh, you know, other people. Uh, no, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and the point of this is to have fun. So we've got uh, Bryce in the chat room. How you doing, man? Robert, how are you? William, what's up? Clara, Jason, Aura, hey, hon. Uh, dog, what's happening? And cooking with Satan, Josh Mosh. <laughs> okay. Okay, good to see you, man. That's a, quite the name. Greg, how you doing? Thanks for joining us live. Uh, Warlock Jeff Ivans, what's happening, man? Good to see you. Vashuri, how you doing? It's been a little bit, I think. Um, Phil, what is happening? Nina, thank you for joining. And anyone else who joins after the fact, I want you guys to put in the chat right now if you want to uh, potentially be an audience assistant. And then uh, either Aaron or Jeff are going to choose or me, are going to choose you to help. So if you want to play, put it in there, and uh, we'll get to that as soon as we got three up there that we want to choose. Now, I'm not saying that you have to choose someone, like the first people that, you know, raise their hand or something. If, for example, you have a, a, a sordid past with them, well, then you, maybe you don't want to have them on your team, you know. I mean, to be honest. Uh, I wouldn't want anyone on my team that I've, you know, for example, shown my junk to. That would just be an odd experience sitting next to. So everyone in the chat is right at. I could be So I'm not gonna have a friend in the chat uh, joining us. Um, okay, so let's see who we've got. We've got William as an option. We've got Claire as an option. Jason, uh, Clarinch twenty three. C Larinch. C Larinch. It's like sometimes reading these uh, YouTube handles is like trying to decipher a, a license plate. Or something. And you never really quite know. Um, cooking with Satan wants to play. Uh, let's see. Who else? C Greg would like to play. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, sorted past. So, uh, Aaron, ladies first. Who do you want as your audience assistant? I am going to go with Clara, please. Okay. Trees official. You got it. What does that mean? Do you know what that means? I do not. Okay. You just didn't know if you knew her or not. Okay, so Clara. She'll have to let us know. Yeah, we need stark honesty in stories and experiences, <laughs> and we need you to be uh, quick typing when it's your turn to uh, share your experience. What I don't want <laughs> is for you just not to say anything or participate at all, because then that's not going to be fun for anyone. And this is meant to be fun. So um, get in on it and let us know what trees official means. You know, because what the fuck? Uh, Jeff, who would you like to be your audience assistant? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, I guess Greg McKinnon looks good. Greg McKinnon. <clears throat> All right. Greg, you're up. Step up. Who do we have here? Um, where's the beginning of the list? Damn it. You know what? I'm going to do William. We'll do William. William, you're my man. I hope you have uh, interesting experiences. All right, so let's do this. So we've got Clara, we've got Greg, and we've got William, and then the three of us. Let's get into the first 
Never have I ever questioned. Oh, boy. This is 186. You're my boy, Greg. Don't let me down. <laughs> You're my boy, Blue. <laughs> You're my boy. Okay, this is this is kind of a stupid one. Never have I ever cried in public. Do you guys have like little signs or anything? I never even talked to you about that. Well, I have. I never. I never made one. Okay. I got. I got booze though. <laughs> that's, that's gonna do. It's just gonna be like boo. Or you mean? Okay, so uh, <laughs> cried in public? Yeah, yeah, hell yes, I have. Have yeah. you? Yeah, absolutely. All of us have. Ah. Yep. All right, so start putting it in there if you've cried in public. Let us know why. What is the – let's let's go with the most embarrassing time you've cried in public. Uh, Aaron, what do you think? What you got? Ooh, you had to go to me first. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can't – I don't know. I feel like I've probably cried in public one too many times. I'm trying to think of what the most embarrassing would have – Ben. Okay, so you put a pin in that and start thinking about it. Jeff, you got anything? I got it. Actually, wait, I oh. got it. I got it. Oh. Not necessarily embarrassing. I did I did try to, to hold my tears in for a while. I uh, I think it was probably about five, five or six years ago. Um, Bernie Williams, who used to play for the Yankees, came to the town that I live in and he was doing like a meet and greet signing type thing and the big baseball geek that I am after I, I held it in while I was meeting him, and then after he got his autograph, I walked away and like cried like a baby the whole way back to the car. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, Jeff. Well, I've I've done it a few times, um, but I think I guess the most embarrassing turned out not being as embarrassing after the fact. But uh, uh, I was at a Flogging Molly concert. Oh shit! And. <laughs> nice. They played the song "Us of Lesser Gods," and at the time, I was doing a lot of research into my ancestry and and whatnot. So the lyrics really, for whatever reason, that night really hit me, and I started bawling like a baby. And I instantly felt like, "What? Why can't I stop?" And then I looked around, and every other grown ass man in that room was bawling too. So then I oh, felt fine about it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, that's good. Um, let's see. I've got a. Uh... Anytime I hear. Um... Like, so I, I go to Scottish festivals and Highland Games and stuff, and they always present the American flag and stuff. And I'm, I'm like a broken human being uh, when it comes to patriotic anything. So uh, I'm like almost always the only person in the crowd saluting. There's, you know, everyone's doing their hand over their heart or whatever. Um, and as the, the flag is going by, I just start openly weeping, not planning on it, not, you know, trying my best to hold it back, doing like the... <laughs> The really manly looking, you know, sob suck, I guess it is. Um, yeah, and then people are just like looking up at me like there's something clearly wrong with this guy. Like, why is he fucking crying in a crowd at a Scottish festival? <laughs> fucking mommy, the, the the guy in the dress is crying. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, so that's my life. <laughs> fuck my life. All right, what do you guys have in here? Clara. Oh, she's my corporation. That makes sense. Uh, a lot in supermarkets and the toy shelves. <laughs> what? Okay. Toy shelves? Okay, I feel like we need a little more context. Uh, but, uh... Like, for being because you can't get the toy that you want type of crying, or...? Yeah, that's a good... You said toy shelves, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there, there sounds like there's a lot more behind that. <laughs> what would be odd is if it's a sex toy shelf. <laughs> and they're like, no, I wanted this. <laughs> that would be a little weird. Um, oh, Clara got it. All right, I mean, uh, Aaron got it. So you didn't get the toy you wanted. How old are you? Are you sure you'd be watching this? <laughs> this is an adult show. <laughs> We're going to have filthy conversations. Um, all right, Greg. Yes, you couldn't swim when you were 11, and the PE teacher made you go in the deep end, and you cried in front of all your classmates. That's terrible. Oh. That sucks. <laughs> but can you tell when you're in the pool? I mean, just dunk your head a little bit. Think of white snakes, you know, when you're crying in the rain. It's not really. Um, all right, William, you've cried in public at an airport when I broke up with your ex flying home. Okay, that's bad. I was quite noticeable yeah. to all around us and quite emotional. I wasn't embarrassed. But, it was, yeah, that's – were you doing like the – the the man cry suck like I was because that would that's like comedy film level of embarrassing. Just well, I like, mean, no no offense to William, but so is breaking up with your ex in an airport. I mean, that's 
That has rom com written all over yeah. it. <laughs> That's like every movie ever. Are you sure? Are you sure you're not Truman? This could be a. <laughs> we might learn something here. Yeah, crying in theaters, I think, is the word. Like, not in like adult theaters, but like like Pixar films. Pixar can fuck off. They, for whatever reason, in every goddamn Pixar film, just like get my little heartstrings and just rip them out. I don't understand what the fuck's going on. I watched yeah. Inside Out in the theater, and I was just like doing my best, just <laughs> doing a lot of eye itching, <laughs> so no one knows what the fuck I'm doing, but everyone knows because they're doing it too. Fucking Pixar, man, they suck. All right, let's do another one. We're going down to 386. So, uh, audience assistants, you guys need to count your own so if it has happened to you subtract a point um, i think everyone's down one at this point yeah, <laughs> yeah. everyone got that. <laughs> um this is an odd one i, I don't even want to do this one this because it's kind of weird never have i ever been on an ocean cruise i have been on an ocean cruise really yeah. i have yeah. not okay I let me not. what was the, what was this cruise that you went on and did you get covid from it I was <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? We were trapped in there, and the shit was over. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I did. Uh, I used to do, as you well know, I used to do executive production work, and I had a client once that took a Caribbean cruise. So I spent about two weeks, yeah, about two weeks, uh, sailing around the Caribbean on a cruise ship. What was the age demo of that? <laughs> um, I'd say probably seventy percent of the people were 65 plus and then another 15 percent were young children and then oh, so very very like very small sliver of the uh of the population on the ship was uh i don't know what you could say normal aged <laughs> yeah yeah i always imagine cruises and let me know if this is true or not it's like a swingers paradise right you just sort of like some some areas of the ship are yeah they i mean the ships are real. They're a lot bigger than I expected when I got on one. Mm -hmm. um, they have areas for everything. So if you're if you're looking for some uh, something to do with the family and the children, they usually have like water parks and theaters on them. If you're looking for something a little more risque, mm -hmm. there's uh, a whole areas below decks where people meet up and do that kind of stuff. It's oh, really shit. weird. Yeah, and they're all seventy five percent elderly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I want to see the young titties. <laughs> I feel, like, yeah, it's got to be like every. I had a friend who was into the swinger culture, and even with, and he was in his like late twenties, early thirties when he was into it, and it was just all older people. Is it just yeah. the time people just get sick of their wives and their, and their husbands? I guess so. I mean, because like, you think about it, it's not just. Uh... It's not just swingers. It's like a lot of the like uh, nudist, right. um, the, the hippies, um, a lot of those little subcultures like that. They're they're mostly older people. I think people are just uh, they've done they they put in their time and they're ready <laughs> yeah. to live however they want at that yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> it's not fuck anymore. Yeah, it's it's like every uh, nudist parade and stuff. It's just a bunch of dudes <laughs> and like uh, <laughs> just like a dusting of girls. <laughs> But it's mostly guys. Um, all right, what do these people say here in the chat room? Uh, oh yeah, and uh, Warlock Ivans, <laughs> your Navy experience does not count as a cruise, although I'm sure there's still swinger activity there too. Uh, <laughs> uh, you've actually only been outside of your own country once, and that was when you were really young. Was it when you ran into the 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 toy aisle? <laughs> like, I never want to go back. I didn't get my fucking toy. Fuck America. Um, where's where's William? Never been on the ocean. And then who's the other one? Greg. Where are you, Greg? Did he answer? Did he drop off? Too terrified of deep water. Okay. Is oh, he... that actually makes sense. Because he had the, the swimming pool story. Um, yeah, yeah. He's All scarred. Right. All right. What is deep water? Like, I want to know what the, the cutoff is. Is it like a really deep, like, tub? Like a soaking tub, a hot tub, like what's your what's your foot range of of safety? The toy all <laughs> story is not really sadly. Yeah, well, what do you know? Yeah, um, yeah I always wonder about that that uh, the depth issue because let's be honest, when we all first saw Jaws for the first time, 
and we had to like go oh. to the bathroom. I was afraid of ju- the freaking shark was gonna bite my little kid wiener. Like I was totally afraid of sharks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to have a toy boat I'd play with in the bathtub. And <laughs> I was like seven years old when I saw Jaws the first time, and ever since then the bathtub it was it was terrifying because there's yeah. a little boat floating around. <laughs> We're gonna need a bigger boat, Dad. Dad, we need a bigger fucking boat. All right, what's our next one here? I might just start going willy nilly and just choosing random ones I want. Go for um, it. All right, this one is I don't, I don't know. This is strange. Never ever have I had a holiday romance. So we got to put like rules around this, right? Because it can't be like a established relationship, right? It's got to be mm-hmm. like a like a one off holiday. Like a holiday fling. Yeah, that, like that's got to be it, right? Like you met a little person on a St. Patty's Day, and oh, it just went really well. I don't know. What okay, do you guys, yeah, what do you, I'll go with that. Um, I have not. I have not. You have? I have indeed. <laughs> was, she, was was it a little person? That's extra points. Was it a little person? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Well, no extra points for you. I wish. I wish. <laughs> I would have evened it out. You know how guys have. A, and, and I hope I'm not like breaking guy code by saying this, but we have like a list. I don't know if you do. I always did of like the types of women that you would always want to have sex with in your life. You know, we do this when you're younger, usually. Um, I've never checked off the little person. Like I always thought that would be a little, yeah. maybe it's like a star Wars return of the Jedi thing. When I was a kid, <laughs> there's like some, maybe I just wanted to fucking Ewok. I don't know, <laughs> but never, never checked it off. Just never happened for me. Uh, William, New Year's one night stand count. Yeah, I think that stands. As long as it was romantic. Yeah, they fling. As long as it wasn't a roofie. Because that's not. Yeah, I figure a fling has to go longer than just one night. That was, you know, kind of. Yeah. Because the one night stand is like a different question altogether. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so William, deduct your point. Where is Clara? Never, I rarely make actual romance happen. And when it does, never really on any special occasions. Holidays usually distract too much to have anything work out for you. Oh, okay. That's a little bit sad, I think. Where is uh, Greg? Greg! Damn it, why can I ever find him on this? Do you guys see him? Do you have your list pulled up? Uh, the last thing I have from him is he said anything overhead. But I don't think that has anything to do with the question. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's a little person. And so he's saying oh, there he is. anything. He said yes, uh, Brittany <laughs> Beach, and I could swim by that point as well. <laughs> oh yeah! All right, good on you, man. Um, damn, this game is going to go fast, Jeff. I told you. I you told you. You live too yes, much. You, you got to be more boring. Become a homebody or something. Oh, here's a good one. Never have I ever soiled myself in public. Oh, oh, I definitely have. Soiled myself in public. <laughs> yeah. You haven't soiled yourself? No. You haven't lived. Like a normal thing is everybody pissing themselves? Like. Oh, soil. I guess soil does include piss. I always, I don't know. I, I suppose. I was going with the uh, number two. Does uh, <laughs> it mean something other than that? And I'm, I'm Number one and two, I think, is what it would Yeah, no. Cover. Definitely. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you never had, like, I, I, thought, I, I thought it was just a fart, but... No sharks over here. No, sorry. Okay, okay. Jeff, let's hear yours. Uh, okay. Uh, you got actually, earlier today. I'm not proud of this, but I've done this probably three or four times. No. <laughs> so, uh, um, I think the uh, the I guess the worst one would be when I was in Iraq. Um, we had to, if we were on patrol, we had to take a battle buddy and go to like a, an area that would be somewhat secure in order to do our business. We couldn't just stop and use a bathroom in a village oh, or yeah. something because you could be a target there. So uh, I had eaten something. I forget what, but it was not sitting well. And we went on a patrol. And at the time, I was the turret gunner for the truck. Um, so not only do I have to get a battle buddy to go with me, but I have to find someone to replace me in the turret. So the rest of the patrol has security as well. And it took so long to find anybody that when I climbed out of the turret of the truck and hopped down to the ground, oh. as soon as my feet hit the ground, oh. it just <laughs> all over my pants. <laughs> it was terrible. And the people in the truck hated me because they had to smell it the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh man, that's good. Mine's not that good. Um, public. So mine's tough because like the, the public nomenclature has to be when I was a kid. Like I just shit my pants in school because I was sick and I didn't, it was just embarrassing. But I've had accidents by myself a lot. So I'm not a lot. I don't habitually shit my pants. I do know how to use a bathroom. I just choose not to. It's a lifestyle choice. <laughs> I, uh, I can honestly say that I, I haven't soiled myself in, in private either. Like, I know the question was in public, but yeah, is that is it really that normal? I feel like you should just add it to the bucket list is all. And know? not live on the yeah. edge of the yeah, you gotta, you gotta, yeah. do it. Yeah. I'll drink a little extra water before bed tonight. <laughs> just one day when, like, the family's <laughs> off doing something, just take a, take a self day. You know, take a day for you. Yeah. And just yeah. let it happen. <laughs> and just shit your pants. <laughs> just, just do it. <laughs> oh, man. Don't take any pictures, though. <laughs> no pictures. No evidence. Um, Greg says he had a bad case of food poisoning. And yes, he involuntarily followed through. <laughs> no, that's the worst. Um, William, William, William. You haven't soiled yourself in public before. At least that's what you know of. Hmm. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> dun 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 and clara have done what oh soiled i get it now uh not really that you can remember i got close to it sometime in elementary because your teacher wanted to refuse letting you go to the toilet but yeah okay i'll buy that for a dollar yeah lazarus is saying you need to get more fucked up <laughs> <laughs> warlock ivan says there's always rate my poo i don't know what that means oh that's a website where uh where you take <laughs> you're like oh i'm subscribed here yeah, link. and people. It's like yeah. I've got that bookmarked. I know that one. <laughs> I'm not okay with the rate my poo. I can't. I've never used it, but I have heard so much about it, like like comedy bits and stuff. Oh, all about really? it. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. I, I don't get that. <laughs> it's beyond me. I can't. All right, let's see what we got here. What's next? Um, I this could be interesting. Never ever have I lied about my age. I feel like that's a I normal thing, have. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I definitely have. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely. Okay. Have. So as I'm subtracting points here from everyone, Aaron, what was your uh, most memorable lie about your age moment? Lying about my age? I mean, that's what kept me drunk, like, through a lot of my teenage years was lying about my age to get into the bars and to, and to buy liquor at the store. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cheers to that. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> I actually, do girls really have to lie or can they just, you know, be like, no, I'm definitely 21. And guys are just like, okay, we'll get your ass in there because we want girls in the bar. You know? There were a lot of times I, I planned on lying. And then once I got in the bar, they just never even asked for ID. So I didn't have to lie. Yeah. Yeah. I think it just helps. The I feel. Scene. I see. I, I feel like like women would get carded more often because apparently they they kind of like that sort of thing. So you think like bartenders and doormen would be doing it more often just to, I don't know, solicit tips basically. Huh. I'm not sure. I understand that. So you mean the girl likes to be carded, or they the institution likes to card the girl? Yeah. From what I know, and obviously this is a, a broad generalization. Mm -hmm. There's exceptions to every rule. But from what I've heard, for the most part, most women like to be carded because it makes them feel like they look young. Right. And uh, and so you would think that in even even a bouncer is a service oriented job, so you'd think that they'd be doing it more often to you know get tips from the girls or whatever. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. See, I was thinking of the other other side of it, where is it too young to be in, and so they were get in. But I definitely get that that side of it for sure. Right. right. There's what is what is that age cutoff where it becomes like like come on you're just sucking up at this point is it is it when <laughs> there's just like lots of neck wrinkles or like what's is it in the 60s in the 50s when you know they are clearly over the hill as it were but you're just trying to I don't know be cute or something once you've started soiling yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think like, I stopped getting carded somewhere around like my early to mid 30s. Oh, wow. I don't want to myself too much, but yeah, that's when like I started. And then I get offended, like, what the fuck? You're not going to card me? Like, really? There it is. Yeah, you're going to get carded. <laughs> yeah. Right. 
But now, like at this age, I'm like, I'm flattered when somebody asks for my ID. <laughs> I always feel like a McLovin every time I give my ID out. <laughs> It's, it's always like this weird like look up like you don't really look like this person is this really your id i always feel so insecure in my head i'm mclovin yeah. i am mclovin uh, mine is always like I, buying cigarettes there was one convenience store that would sell cigarettes to underage kids cigarettes to underage kids and so i was always going to that one and always lying about my age trying to get in just like no yeah i'm, I'm totally i can't even remember what the age was i think it was like 17 or 18 or something like that but yeah I would think that it's a lot more difficult now to carding people because everybody's wearing a mask when they go in the store. I was thinking that right. recently. How do they even know whether it's a fake ID or not? Or yeah, my beard gives me away. <laughs> it's peeking out under. I don't know. I still grow a beard, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, you need to shit your pants and grow a beard. <laughs> two, God damn right. Two points for your bucket list. Um. Yeah, that's always creepy seeing like the old lady with like the wispy <laughs> whiskers. And it all, it's like an inevitable thing, right? Like people just grow hair. It's like I feel mm -hmm. like for for ladies, they start losing it the pubes and it starts growing on the chins around the same time. Cuz like old ladies have like I don't anyway, I'm not going to go. I don't know why. I don't know <laughs> how I know that. Oh. Um, it was from The Shining. That's how I know that. Whew, okay, good. God. <laughs> who, who, what are these people saying? Lied about your age? Uh, you have, you've been attempting to set up a PayPal account at age like 14 or so. After you got in trouble with PayPal, your parents got mad. Called, how old are you? <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to be in this feed or play in this game. What's that? That's Clara. That's yours. You're the underage. You're sitting. You're Clara. You're babysitting. I'll, I'll, I'll she, she goes toy shows. <laughs> <laughs> uh william a lot of it was how you got carried yourself wait did he give us an answer you always looked older growing up that is one weird thing about aging though right when you're younger you want to look older when you're older you want to look younger we just need to travel back in time and say just enjoy it while you can because there's going to be a day when all these wrinkles start appearing and <laughs> the self-loathing begins uh never did Where's Greg? Why can't I ever find Greg? Anyone else see him? Uh, I saw him up. He said he had, oh, but I, I didn't get the story. It was up way up there, but people were talking too much. So. <laughs> Damn people in your communications. Uh, you had a bunch of cases. Oh, no, that's the food poisoning one. What the fuck? All right. Well, someone hunt for it if you can. And uh, I'm going to roll for the next one. Because I can't see it. All right. We're going down to the 300s in this one. You know, I'm just going to pick random ones. Just ones that I think would be interesting. Because, oh, here's a good one. Never have I ever caught my parents having sex. Parents? I have not. Have sex. I have not. So I, I need some clarification. Is it caught them like, as in visually saw them? I know that. <laughs> like, well, see, when a... Well, when a man loves a woman very much. <laughs> Does it count if you if you hear them in the other, if you, like, heard them when you were a kid in the other room? That's or do you have to actually, like, walk in on them? I feel like the implication is walk in. Uh, no, yeah, no. Wow. Yeah, no. 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 Yeah. That's, yeah. What about, is it, was it unsettling to hear them? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Was it just normal, or was it like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, what's no. the... <laughs> What was really fucked up is like then the next morning, I at one point I realized that it wasn't even my mother that was in the room with my father, so it was oh. like double, double like scarring. Like, oh, what the hell? Like, I thought, yeah, oh. <laughs> that's fucked up. Okay, but here's the other side of that. Started all my issues. <laughs> at a later point, did you hear your actual mom and dad having sex, and then did you compare the sounds between the two if they enjoyed it more or less? Definitely did not. No. <laughs> Okay. Well, no, yeah. Now that curious. I think of it, I don't think I ever actually heard my parents. It was always like, you know, my dad doing shit he wasn't supposed to be doing. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, did you say you did? I have not. No. Oh, okay. No. So just me. I was raised in a single parent household, so. Uh, Wait, no. was your parent yeah. over at her parents' house? <laughs> Is that... <laughs> Maybe. We got a weird connection here, people. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I walked in on my uh, my mom and my stepdad when I was a little kid, and 
I had no concept of sex at all. Like I was, you know, just too young to even have it enter my, my mind at all. And so when I walked in, I, and they're both Mormon, and so they're, they're actually wearing their magic underwear. Um, and my mom was reaching over like her leg to like saddle my, my stepdad. And I was confused because I didn't know what the hell was going on. So I'm just like turning my head like, what the fuck am I, what, like, what is this? And then my mom turned around and freaked out and grabbed blankets and stuff. And then she was like, close the door, get out of here. So I didn't know until the next day what I actually walked into when my sisters like were making fun of me for having stayed there for too long watching. Like, oh, he wants to watch them have sex. I was like, I don't know. What are you talking about? I didn't know. I don't know. But I grew up in a household. Uh, actually, I have a, I have a follow-up question to that. Oh. Uh, I know that Mormons are notoriously, uh, I guess you could say, re repressive, you know, uh, about sexuality and things like that. Yeah. Did your parents ever have the talk with you, or did you have to find out through other things? Good question. My mom is an artist and who did a lot in BYU. She did a lot of uh, life drawing. And so she drew pictures to show me. <laughs> so I had it down. I was just, and from then on, anytime they'd show us pictures of, uh, I don't know, like actresses or, you know, models or whatever or anything, I'd be like, they'd look a lot better naked. <laughs> I'm just being honest. It's, you know, there's something very beautiful about the human form, I think. Um, so, yeah, and that's probably why I think it's actually artistic. Like, it's, it's a beautiful form because there's nothing really inherently beautiful about wrinkly balls or, like, dangly labia, right? I mean, it's just, it's like, eh. It's not like, ooh, that's beautiful. Like, I, need, I want that on my wall. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But my mom would also walk around in her uh, magic uh, underwear and just magic underwear. And they are, like, fucking see-through. And so I was right. scarred as a young boy for like just like 70s bush <laughs> all day, every day. I was just like, what the fuck is going on? And so as soon as I saw, I can't remember the actress's name in Showgirls, but she was completely shaved. I was just like, oh, it's yeah. a whole new world. <laughs> like I had no <laughs> idea that that was even an option of removing the bush. I thought it was great. See, and I love the bush. I, I want bushes everywhere. Shrubberies for all. <laughs> everywhere. I wanted to go from the sternum down. <laughs> all right, Aaron, where do you land on the bush? Do you, do you like the trim? Do you like to let it go? Um, no, no comment. For your partners, I should say, not necessarily just for you. Like, do you prefer your partners to be trimmed? Or do you like them to be a little more jungle? I, oh, okay. I thought you meant myself. Um... I, yeah, I guess. I mean, you know, I wouldn't want it to be like 70s male bush, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't want to go through the jungle to get to the treasure. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. You don't want that giant ball. You sure it's in here? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Some, some manscaping would be nice. yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, what did uh, what did these people say? No, you discovered their lovemaking manuals under the bed. They had manuals? Manuals. They had Greg. Your parents had manuals. What are these manuals you speak of? Sounds like the Kama Sutra. <laughs> okay, that God. would make sense. But I'm thinking like, like Necronomicon bound in flesh manuals with like <laughs> demonic drawings and shit. It's like the Kama Sutra mixed with the Necronomicon. I want to know about these. The manuals. ink is like cum and blood. <laughs> <laughs> well, it lasts longer. Right, right. <laughs> It'll go 100 years or so. <laughs> Dude. Uh, William never walked in on them, but they heard them in the next room as a kid. Yeah, I don't... I feel like, like, as a parent, we try to be, like, in a nunnery. Like, as quiet as possible. And every once in a while, you get sort of caught up in the moment. And I have to do the shushing. And that's... <laughs> uh, that sucks. Yep. Because yep. that takes me out of it. And I know it takes her out of it. Nothing worse. Uh, it's than like sometimes, sure. like, I, I, my my daughter's actually here on her uh, winter break from college right now. So sometimes I find myself like in the moment, and I have to like leave the moment for a second to grab a pillow and like smother my. Life. <laughs> <laughs> like, Shut I'm up! not killing you, but fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have an, an audio issue at all, Aaron? Where you you square? I get I get very like 
self-conscious like i'm i'm constant like i think that i'm being loud right. and then Matt, matt's always the one to reassure me like no no you weren't being loud you know but yeah i'm always nervous that nice. the kids can hear me so i feel like it's almost healthy blow my own face <laughs> <laughs> Screaming in your own pet pillow. I've definitely done that. Like, when in doubt, just put a pillow over your face. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty good advice, actually. Um, I kind of think it's healthy, though. Like, to the, so that, you know, in the same way that, I mean, it's a little weird healthy, but in the same way you want to show affection in front of your kids, like hugging and maybe, you know, a kiss or something so that they know that the parents love each other, they understand what intimacy is. Um, and, you know, you're supposed to hug and kiss your kids and stuff so that they understand what intimacy is. Um, it's a little weird that I'm still French kissing my son. <laughs> <laughs> but we love each other. <laughs> no, but, so, you know, I mean, so you want to make sure that there's, like, th that they're not going to grow up with hang-ups. And so I think just hearing that, because let's be honest, like, only a few hundred years ago, they were, they were fucking in the same room. So it's oh, not yeah. like... I don't yeah. know. Well, in some places in the world, they still are. Yeah. It's not, it's not that yeah. far removed. Yeah. I think it's healthy. All right. Um, as long as you're not including them, you sick fucks. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, where's Clara? So does your case count as... Well, what did you say, Clara? Clara? I can't remember. I've been going on too many. Oh, you heard them in the next room. No, I don't think hearing counts the same. As far as like, yeah. never have I ever. I think it's inevitable. I think every kid hears their parents yeah. in the other room at some point. It's got to be a, a situation where you want to burn your eyes out of the sockets for it to count. <clears throat> it's like, oh. And what did Greg say? Where's Greg? <laughs> Greg, Greg, Greg. No, but you discovered their love making. Oh, yeah, you did the manuals. Yeah. Do you ever reply to the manual thing? I'm curious. Oh, Kama Sutra. The priest was appalled. Kama Sutra. Did you guys ever look at the Kama Sutra? I have looked at one. I've never, like... Hey, let's go color by oh, numbers. You pull it off the shelf right Facebook. now. You're like, oh, I've got the uh, first 35 <laughs> right. pages checked off. Like, well, the book says we got to try this lotus position, so we're going to try the lotus Yeah. Yeah, I always thought it was way oh, overblown. I've looked at it. I thought, I thought it was going to be greater than it was because it's it's like the book that everyone talks about, you know, and like, ooh, the Kama Sutra. Uh, eh, right. I could do without it. I'd rather have the there's demon the, one. There's... There's a sex position Bible out there that is, a, it, it's a pretty thick book. Yeah, really? That you can, you can buy in like Barnes and Noble. We may or may not have it. Just saying. <laughs> it's <fantastic. laughs> but it's along the same lines. It's got like like hundreds of different sex positions in it. Yeah. Is it all just variations on like three different positions? Like I feel like there's not really that many positions, right? Yeah. It, or am I just doing it wrong? I think it depends on how flexible you are. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, got there's, it. There's some in there where, like, I look at it like, there's no fucking way I'm getting, like, my legs <laughs> Yeah. There's yeah. some there's crazy stuff, you know, but, yeah. I feel like I got to do, like, a lot of, like, squats and stuff just to have the leg strength <laughs> for a lot of the, you know? There's, there's a lot of, like, mid-sitting, squatting, like, poses that I just don't feel like I have the thigh strength for. That'd be embarrassing. I'm all shaken. Oh, come on, hurry up. Are you there yet, honey? Fuck. Oh, cramping. Muscle failure halfway through. <laughs> Just puke. Oh, find out that that's her kink. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Don't yell at yourself. <laughs> Don't discount the sex part. The embarrassing sex part. All right, what are we talking about? That should be the never have I ever farted during sex. I'm going to add that in. Uh. <laughs> farted during sex it probably is in there already all right i'm gonna i'm gonna randomly draw one from uh what you guys have put in here uh <laughs> well this is a fun one i feel like most people have done um doubted your own question or questioned your sexuality never have i ever doubted or questioned your sexuality i don't really think i have no. point, like your entire life yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Well, no. Wait. Actually, no. Wait. No. Actually, well, I haven't. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I was always, I'm not, no. I was always just very comfortable, like okay. you know, being attracted to whoever I was attracted to. So. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't say doubted it. No. 
I think I knew like a very young age that like I was attracted to men and women. So it was, it wasn't like a doubting. Yeah. Well, yeah, I okay, just so always went with it. Uh, like yeah. whatever I was attracted to or feeling in the moment, just went with it. it. Never, never bothered me. Never had any guilt about it or anything like that. See, I think that's more important because the question is premised around the idea of there being a hang up. If you did, right. were attracted to something other than the traditional opposite sex. And so if you mm -hmm. don't have that stigma, then you wouldn't have doubted it. Hence, the question is irrelevant. So I guess, I don't know. I mean, just take it at face value, I suppose. You just worked yourself into a weird logic problem. Right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to get those sex manuals to get this right. <laughs> you get my head right. No, because I did have a lot, like as a young, I, I didn't so much doubt that I was attracted to women because I was clearly always attracted to women in my life. But there were like sexual experiences as a young man that made me question whether or not I was only attracted to women. And so mm -hmm. that's where I would fall in that line of, of like, if you consider sexuality a black and white, well then I'm straight. But if it's a scale, then I'm definitely on the scale because there's just some guys right. that, you know, they're great. What do you that's want? <laughs> uh, Justin says, yeah, I'm just doing it wrong. Okay. <laughs> I can accept that. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, Clara says she definitely has and still is. Well, good on you. You'll get there. Or maybe not. Maybe that's your journey, you know? Is that a yeah. douchey thing to say? That's your journey. Just, <laughs> just, just go on your journey. <laughs> Look at that. The, the sigil of Bathman on your wall just started spinning right side up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. You haven't earned this. <laughs> you just earned some douche points. Um, let's see. Where is Clara? You are, you, did you, uh, can someone please repeat the question for this one? You missed it. Did you ever doubt or question your sexuality? No, you've never questioned your sexuality, but you have kissed guys before while drunk. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, like random I think, I think that's part of the problem too, is like when, when you're asking, like if you're questioning your sexuality, I never, in my own mind, never put a kind of label on sexuality. I didn't. And honestly, the first time that I ever uh, even pondered the idea of sexuality having a label or anything like that was uh, when, like, you know, uh, gay rights activists were making the rounds on the news. And then it's like, in my mind, and I know there's, you know, a lot of people that are into that kind of stuff, and I understand the history of it and why people protest and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, I was just like, who cares? Fuck what you fuck. Love what you love. I, there's no need for uh, there's labels are very important things i just don't feel like there's yeah yeah interesting See, need I... for them on sexuality yeah i grew up in a um like a small religious town and so it was the deepest shame to even be called faggot like it was just like homosexuals were seen as vile and disgusting and wrong in every way and so just yeah. if you wanted to piss someone off you know, you'd call him queer, you'd call him a fag, and that would just instantly, like, no, I'm oh, not, fuck yeah. you, man! You know, it's just, like, fighting words. Certainly. I, I also think there's, like, an archetype, though, when you're when you're insulting someone using a word like, you know, queer or fag or whatever. Yeah. There's an archetype you're going for, and that's kind of separate from the sexuality itself, in my opinion. Yeah. I yeah. won't say any more, unless okay. you get kicked off. <laughs> <laughs> we're all gonna get canceled <laughs> just like fuck um greg uh you can fantasize about gay sex right. and be straight it's all good i don't know if, if you're fantasizing about it I, I mean you guess it was kind of okay i didn't see there's a difference between romantic sex and visceral sex sometimes it's romantic and visceral it's all cool I, is that an answer i don't know if that's an answer to it all right well honor system and and uh do your own points for that. Deduct if you think you should deduct. What's that? I just said deduct a point if you think you should deduct one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, okay, here's a fun one. Uh, never have I ever fled from the police. Actively tried to flee, not get caught by. <laughs> you fled from the cops. I, I have. Okay. Yeah. I put more in like a... Not for like a felony or anything crazy, but like you know, Mr. like teenagers having like parties, drinking parties in the woods when oh, you're shit, underage. Oh shit, the cops are here! Look, it's the cops, and everybody throws their little red cups and the halls ass. Yeah, I've definitely. 
I don't. I don't think I. So like, I've been in an area and been doing something I shouldn't have been doing, and see the cops coming down the street and step on the other side of a door and close it behind me, and then just wait till they pass by. Does that count as fleeing? Because no. yeah, I didn't think so. I've never been in like a foot chase running away from the cops or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't either. I, I, I mean, to my detriment, I don't run away from cops. I always feel like I can either talk the situation down because I don't engage in fucking you know illegal activity generally, um, so I'm not really concerned about it. But yeah, there's one time where um, uh, my friend pulled a gun on the car next to us. It was full of a bunch of douchey Mormon boys. And they were just like right slow in front of us. And so he like sped around by side of them, pulled out a revolver and pointed it at him. And then they called the cops to prove how douchey they are. They called the cops on him and him and I being the stupid fucking little Hessians that we were um, coming out of McDonald's in the middle of the fucking night. Uh, he was just like slamming on the brakes, making these squealing sounds. And there just happened to be a fucking popo up the street watching the street. And then, uh, you know, he got the message about the license plate, pulled us over. And it was like one of those, like, white trash moments where I had cut off shorts and no shirt and, like, one nipple ring and long hair. And it just, like, look, you know, fucking Motley Crue is playing on the radio. It was just, like, the most embarrassing white trash cops moment ever. But I didn't run. So it doesn't count. That doesn't count. Uh, what does Clara say? Fled from the police. You tried stealing once and got caught by detective. By detective? Because you forgot about the surveillance cams. By a detective? Did she, did she actually flee though? Because yeah, yeah, I don't. No, Nothing. I don't think that counts as fleeing. You, you uh, how fast point. did you leave the scene of the crime? <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah. Were you scared? <laughs> but I want to hear more about this detective. Like I've never ah. thought. Yeah, because this like, that's a whole new level. Of, uh... <laughs> yeah. It is. It's like the next. One of the toys. Was the... <laughs> is that what happened? It's a toy. He took the toy. Were you raiding a bag? Of it's a toy. Is that what's going on? Because, in fact, uh, wait, what did William say? Yes, you have a felony charge for fleeing and eluding in the third degree. Your record still while driving home in your Firebird, Firebird formula. Oh, wow. Yeah. That, uh... That'll Are do you it. a good old boy? Like, was it Boss Hog that was behind you? In the fucking Firebird? Were you jumping ditches and, like, doing, like, mid-air slow downs? And then just... as, as Wes is on the banjo, just plucking it out. <laughs> uh, hell yeah. Uh, Greg was in France, and the CRS charged you and fired tear gas canisters at you? Holy shit, what? That's a story right there. I want oh to my right gosh, write that novel out. I want to read that thing. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Fucking, you got a life. All right, let's do another one here. 63, we're going to the beginning of this document. All right. Oh, eh, never have I ever chipped a tooth. I have not, actually, surprisingly. Ooh, ooh, to you tell. Yeah, I I don't even I don't remember. I don't think it was anything that interesting. I don't have like a big, cool story to to tell. Were you super young when it happened? Like, like, I can't, like, no, babies. I just don't remember like what it was. Like whether I like bit down on something and like you know something chipped or if I you know I I don't know. Well, let's make up a story then because when you and Greg were hanging out in yeah. France and they were <laughs> firing the gas canister, tear gas canister. <laughs> You like turn to run and uh, you're like, run, Greg, run. And <coughs> excuse me, it scared him. And he like put his hands up and it accidentally hit you in the mouth. And that's how you chip your tooth. That's it. <clears throat> that's it. I actually had a friend chip a tooth just by biting on popcorn of all uninteresting ways to chip a tooth. Those kernels are bad though. It's, yeah. it's, always, the, it's always the small things that, that finally do it. You know, like yeah. uh, biting into an apple, eating a piece of popcorn. Yep. I'm waiting for the day. It's going to happen soon, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid of that happening. I feel like every time I go to the dentist and they do the x-rays, it just looks like there's no bone. It's just all filling. <laughs> so I, I really feel like it's just a matter of time before it gives loose. It's going to fall off. <clears throat> all right, let's do another one here. Oh, wait, what did they say? Uh, oh, yeah. 
Was oh, yeah, one. there's there's assistance. You try to get to the eggs on a regular pace. You got stopped before leaving. There's no chase or anything. Oh, okay, that was about the... Chip tooth, you mean like broken part of one out? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, I think that counts. Yeah. That counts as a chip. Yeah. As long as the whole tooth doesn't come at once, I'd say it's a chip. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, William bit his tongue ring and broke a tooth in 06 when he was oh, eating pizza. damn. <clears throat> Where do you two land on the tongue ring thing? Is it, at, at this point in this day and age, is a tongue ring like a guy having a belly ring in the 90s? Is it like, eh? Or is it still like a thing that is kind of cool? I had my tongue pierced uh, in like the late 90s. I think it was like 90, 98 or 99. Yeah. I had it in for a few years. I don't know if I would do it again, though. Like, I don't really have any big desire to, you know, to have it in again. Was there, because every, inevitably it's always like, no, it's great for fellatio. Like, is it is it that big of a difference? Um, I don't, I never used it for that. And I, I wasn't, yeah, oh, I wasn't okay. in, in a position, so to speak, to actually, right. to find out. What about you, yeah. Jeff? I heard this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we had a tradition, uh, in my unit when I was getting out of the army, um, where the, the last, the big day we began our, uh, terminal leave, we would go to the local, uh, piercing tattoo shop and get our tongues pierced. And then head over to a friend's house, friend's house, um, smoke a bowl. And then uh, that was our thing because for the whole time you're in, you're not allowed to get, you know, noticeable piercings. You're not allowed to smoke. You're not allowed, you know, anything like that. Um, So I had it done and it was a horrible mistake because the same night I got it done, I went to party with my uh, section chief um, because we had never been able to fraternize, you know, outside of, uh, work so i was officially out and he's like come on over let's have some beers and i down like a 12 pack of beer which as everyone knows has yeast in it with this open wound no. in my mouth no. <laughs> and my tongue swole up and i could barely speak uh, um but as far as where i stand on it like i i still like the look when it's on a woman i i love seeing women with tongue rings it maybe it's just my child i'm you know i did grow up in the 90s so you know, maybe it's just my child or whatever, but uh, I, I kind of feel like after a certain age, it's stupid for men to have one. I know that sounds, you know, whatever kind of way, mm-hmm. but there's always exceptions. Like if there's a guy who is, you know, so, someone like um, like um, Enigma or someone like that who does the whole body art thing, yep. then yeah, absolutely rock the tongue ring, you know. Um, but for your average Joe walking down the street with a tongue ring, it just kind of seems. Yeah, I. Any, like, if I saw a guy walking yeah. out in, like, a business casual with a, a coffee, like, a Starbucks coffee or something, and he had a tongue ring, I would want to punch him in the face. Yeah, it'd be weird, right? Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> eh, what are you doing? Like, yeah. I'm not really your thing, dude. Like, know your audience. But if it was just, like, someone that was in the lifestyle, then, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't care. I, I would actually feel better about someone having a tongue ring if they had, like, another facial piercing of some sort you know like sure. yeah a, yeah an odd yeah. earring or like an eyebrow or something then i'm like oh okay well, that makes sense but yeah weird uh phil rev the answer is yes <laughs> all right what did you guys say broke a tooth on an abscess and got an abscess oh my gosh okay That's yeah that scary. does suck greg uh Thanks. what the fuck were we talking about oh chipped a tooth that was it <laughs> just went fucking off the rails there for chipped a second <laughs> we've all been there <laughs> uh, never have i ever campaigned for a political candidate <clears throat> have you guys campaigned for what does that entail yeah i have not either i mean it would have to be you know door-to-door campaigning or phone calling or you know campaigning yeah oh you're cutting in and out a little bit. Was that a yes or a no? Sorry. Uh, no, I haven't, like, called or canvassed, but, I mean, I had a sticker on my call when Ron Paul was running for president. Yeah, I don't think that counts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Would, sticker counts. yeah. <laughs> uh, Clara, what does like, campaigning mean? Next to everybody and, like, yelling at people to vote for him. That might be a little mm. bit. <laughs> right. Right. 
Yeah, because everyone knows on your way to the polls, that's the deciding factor when someone yells at you from outside of your car. Right. Yeah. Like, I don't know who to vote <laughs> for. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll vote for them. Thanks for the, the suggestion. <laughs> so weird. Thank you for shouting at me, strange person. Yeah. <laughs> Such a strange thing. Uh, okay, so Clara never happened to... Wait, no, where are you? Campaign. So uh, I hope that's clear. Okay, so no, you have not campaigned for anyone. Greg has not canvassed or campaigned. What about William? Nope, never did anything politically. Yeah, I should just remove that because that's a stupid fucking... Well, I know, you never know who you're going to get, though. You yeah, know, like, true. I know some members who are deeply into politics that huh. might, might have done something like that. Uh, well, here's an interesting one. Never, ever have I had frostbite. Anyone? Oh, I have. Holy shit, what? I have, yes. Oh, yes, sir. Tell me about frostbite. <laughs> It'd be like a, like a snow avalanche story and, like, yeah. <laughs> Is, no, that would be awesome. This like, is how you lost your left testicle. Chop off my own foot. Yeah. <laughs> came and rescued you. <laughs> no, it was. Uh, it's actually. It's. It's stupid. But uh, when I was young, I kind of grew up part of my childhood in Minnesota, and uh, there was one year. I think it was uh, '93, where there was a really bad blizzard, and um, I had to walk to school. And we lived in this kind of small town, so my school was across the entire town. And uh, my dumb ass didn't bring a hat with me. And when I got to school, I had a little blue patch on the top of my ear. Oh, area. shit. They oh, didn't shit. have to cut anything off or anything. They just right. uh, treated it with some ointments and stuff, and it eventually went away. But... So I've, I've heard that if you've once had it in an area, it's more susceptible. Do you notice yes. that? Yes. Huh. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I've had both cold weather and hot weather injuries in oh, my life. Shit. And, uh, now, how and long so I noticed... Like how, how uh, it was there. The the spot itself, um, it went from dramatic pause. Dramatic pause. You froze up on us. <laughs> now we're never gonna hear the story. <laughs> it's coming. Oh. <laughs> there we go. You're back. All right, I'm back. There you <laughs> um uh, it um the color lasted for about a month and then it got it kind of started fading and the uh, it stayed scaly for almost a year after Whoa. that. Wow. But yeah, but yeah, hot, hot weather and cold weather injuries. When I'm in extreme heat or extreme cold, I can feel those parts of my body start to act up again. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Um, Greg says no, and he lives in Scotland. But you don't get much snow in Scotland unless you're like way north, right? Um. Let's see, Clara. Where is yours? Frostbite. How does that even happen? You think your ultimate climate is way too mild for that? All right, where are you regionally? Clara's in Germany. Oh, is she? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. You couldn't. There's there's some parts when I was stationed in Germany, they got really fucking cold. So I feel like even even without snow, it would get really cold sometimes in Europe. Yeah. So I feel like regionally, you know, depending on whether you're prepared or not. Um, William, you had frostbite up north Michigan as a kid, but it's going to be 17 degrees out here in Detroit tonight, so you could get some tonight. You had frostbite as a kid. Man. Okay. I was in, uh, I was in a uh, station in Mannheim, Germany, uh, Clara. But we would do training all over, so it wasn't like I just stayed in that little tiny place. Uh, yeah, I never had any, f like, cold or hot injuries. I was, uh... I guess I was fortunate enough to always, you know, have people around me saying, you know, make sure you're, you're bundled up. Like I always, as a kid, I always felt like the kid from Christmas story where the mom's putting like clothes on clothes on clothes, <laughs> like all the time. So I just like, okay, well, this is life. I suppose I'm the Michelin man. Sticking your tongue to pull. <laughs> yeah, well, we, again, we're going to the, the, the tongue ring <laughs> cock sucking story. <laughs> Not that. So, oh, different <laughs> <laughs> and the Kama Sutra. We have a theme running throughout <laughs> this show. Oh, here's a, a potentially interesting one. Never have I ever hitchhiked. I have hitchhiked. You have? I have, I have indeed. You have too. Okay, so let's start with Aaron. What do you what do you got? Where'd you go? Um where did I go? Just to, that's that's you know, stupidly, you know, in hindsight, how I got around most of the time, me and my best friend Sarah when I when we were teenagers would we would hitchhike to the mall or to a friend's house or oh, wow. sometimes 
happens to wherever. Yeah, like in hindsight, like really fucking stupid though, you know, especially thinking back to some of like the weird people that, you know, picked us up being teenage girls, like not a good idea. I definitely yeah. do recommend. Do not try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I have hitchhiked. Uh, sorry, that was a lie. I, I just remembered one. Uh, Jeff, what was yours? Uh, okay, actually. Actually, um, I've done it a few times, usually just uh, short, like, you know, to get to downtown. Man. Uh, on the good stuff. In Las I was living in Las Vegas at the time, and uh, I had a job that I was working with a friend, and we traveled uh, via car. We drove from Las Vegas all the way to uh, North Carolina for the job. And uh, when we got to North Carolina, he and I had a big falling out, and we beat the holy hell out of each other and i basically said fuck this i'm leaving and i hitchhiked all the way back to vegas holy shit <laughs> wow how yeah. long did that take um it only took uh, about four four or five days all together oh only <laughs> yeah believe it or not people were happy to pick me up <laughs> <laughs> they're like fresh meat uh, have you okay so as adults have you ever picked up someone hitchhiking no oh yeah Oh, have you? I, yeah. I've seen too many horror films. I couldn't. <laughs> like, I well, I'm always, you know, I'm not you want to keep your eye on people, but like, I'm not going to pick up a crust punk or something like that. But, uh, <laughs> but like, if you see someone who's like walking from their car and they're going, they're obviously like they've got, uh, they ran out of gas, they're going oh. to the nearest gas station and it's clear. It, yeah, I'll pick them up, give them a ride there oh, and yeah. back. Nice. Usually. Yeah, I had this um, really like really fucking sort of depression focus. Like I was in a really bad place as a kid. Um, like I was kicked out of my house and I was on a lot of drugs and just sort of like didn't really have any prospects at all. And so I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to, it was in his winter. So I was like, I'm going to walk up the highway. I know where there's some high rocks and I'm either just going to sit down and freeze to death or I'm just going to launch myself off these fucking rocks and fucking end it all. And I'm walking up the freeway and it gets too fucking cold for me to decide to even consider going through with it. And so I just hitchhiked back to the the pool hall that I hung out at. <laughs> Not as interesting, but <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let's see. What do you guys have? You stayed out with your brother in the woods in a tent camping out. Got up at a cabin. All right. What? what? William's got one point left. What is your, you got stranded by old kids when you were out partying and hitched home drunk. Okay. Nice. And Greg, yes, you picked up festival goers. Oh, okay. Nice. And he hitchhiked yeah. in France called Auto Stop. It's fairly normal. Oh, okay. That's cool. And then Clara. Yeah, I feel like hitchhiking culture in Europe is a lot more prevalent than it is in the U.S. Same with like Australia and New Zealand. Like hitchhiking isn't a big deal there, but here it's. Well, you know, everyone compares it to the horror movies or whatever. Yep, right. It wasn't a big deal, like, in the 80s, for sure. I mean, especially I grew up in, like, you know, in a very rural, you know, country area. But my, my father would always pick up hitchhikers with, like, when I was in the car. It just wasn't a big deal, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It's definitely a different time, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I was asking, she believes per an halter in German never even thought about it it was always sound creepy suspicious to do yeah so i i think that would be a no for you um yeah and brad says he used to hitch hike all the time as kids we were in a i mean we were in a, a safer place though if you're talking about where we you know similarly grew up um that was a much safer area i do think it's a different time like i distinctly remember a time as a young man between never having to lock your door and then suddenly you must lock the doors. You're never out after dark because there's been like a, a kidnapping in the area or something like it just switches like that. As soon as one thing happens and then everyone loses their I, mind. I think that I think that that's more the, the different time thing is more the media influence, though, because if you yeah. look statistically, the crime rate is going way down. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I mean, not this moment, but in general. Yeah. No, that's that's totally fair. All right, let's see. We got 287. We've been doing this for over an hour. Should we stop now or should we do one more? Uh, let's keep going. We've got to get a winner. There can be only one. There can be only one. 
Oh, this is shit. Uh, never have I ever hooked up with a friend's sibling. One of your friends. You have not. Uh, what do you think, Jeff? Is that something normal? Yes, I I most certainly have. Absolutely. Two or three times. <laughs> Says I have and I do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Just yesterday <laughs> when I was over at Brad's place. No. Uh, yeah. What's your story, Jeff? What do you got? Um, uh, no, it's, it's always a go-to if you have a friend who is uh, of the, the opposite sex or whatever oh you're breaking up oh yeah he keeps and, breaking up oh no you back you guys here yeah I'm here alright um, yeah, it's it's a fairly common thing for someone like uh, if you're single and your friend is with someone for them to go, oh, my sister's available or my cousin's available or whatever, and they they'll set you up. So it's happened a few times. I think the uh, the most memorable. No. You set it up with this enticing, <laughs> the most memorable cut off. <laughs> oh no. Every time. Uh, <laughs> all right, you're back. Well, at least it's not Adam having the technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> I've had my fair share, <laughs> damn it. Yeah, that'll still happen later. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice story. Yeah, the, the most memorable one would be when I was 13. Uh, <laughs> I got when he was 13. I heard that part. Uh, I feel like yeah, this is the fill-in-the-blank episode. <laughs> this is a Mad Lib yeah. <laughs> episode. All right, you're back now. Just imagine the story. Just imagine the story. I'm okay. not telling you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think my, my I have is a little bit skewed because I didn't hook up. We just fooled around. Um, and it was weird because I was young, too. And so it was like she was young, I was young, and her brother was like, hey, do this with Adam do that to Adam. So it was like orchestrated. So it was kind of a weird situation to be in. Huh. And he was under a pool table, which was also kind of weird. Under know. it? Was yeah. Not on, uh, under it. It was like a, like a fort. Under pool tables? <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot of space, but we weren't very old. So we were, we were kids. Hmm. Um, all right, let's do one more and then we'll call it. Cause it looks like uh, we're almost done anyway. All right. Uh, what is this? Never have I ever convinced a friend to dump a partner. Oh, I absolutely have. <laughs> there you go. We got. I feel so boring. <laughs> I have not. I just I've, mind my own business. I've tried, but I've never been successful. So I don't think that counts. But being successful, mm. I think counts. So what is what? How are you successful, Jeff? Yeah, oh, I I have. I have talked friends into uh, breaking up with their partners for my own benefit. Oh, I've no. I've talked them into doing it for <laughs> their benefit. <laughs> we call that lesser um, magic. But I think the he the heaviest ones are, are when <laughs> someone is in uh, an abusive relationship and they need someone to be the voice of reason in their life. Because that's a very hard position to put yourself in. Mm -hmm. But if you care for someone enough, you know you might lose the friendship, but you have to try. Yep. You know? That's what I did. I, I tried and I lost my friendship because of it. Because they got back together. I was like, dude, like they were they were separated, but they didn't actually like cut it off. They just wanted space. And I was like, look, she's treating right. you like shit, man. Like you, you need someone who's gonna, you know, take care of you as much as you take care of her. Like you do everything for this person and she treats you like shit regularly. And then uh, mm. he was like, I understand, I know, I know, I know. And then they got back together. I, the power of the pussy, man. They got <laughs> the power of the I'm pussy. Telling you. They got back together, and <laughs> immediately she was like, you cannot be friends with him anymore. So we wow. we broke our friendship up. It was fucked. Yeah. All because I was talking shit. All right. So uh, Clara, um, a friend's sibling. Yep, that's what we're talking about. Uh, you have to give a hard no on that one. William says, uh, email says, zero. oh, he must have. Yeah, banged your friend's sister. <laughs> okay. I think that counts. Yeah, Greg says no, never. Um, and Greg also tried to break people up, but he hasn't been able to. Like me, uh, you've had people recognize themselves, but in your defense, let's see. 
Okay. So tally up your points. If you have zero points, then you don't have anything to add to ours. Um, we're going to, uh, so Clara, how many points do you have? Put it in the chat. William has zero. I know that. And he was mine. Um, Greg, how many points do you got? And we'll add that to Jeff's zero. And uh, we'll, we'll figure out who wins. I, t I told you before we started. I told you. Yeah. <laughs> Clara's got six left. All right. So wow. same as Aaron Lynn, you got 10 I've points total. Uh, I've got two points total. It all comes down to Greg. What has Greg got? The Actually, moments are Jeff mm. may not win if, uh, if Greg has a lot of points. It's all about the people. We got to add them together. Well, it's the most points wins, right? Or whoever has the most points. Um, it's the, the oh, end, wait, right? yeah, I think you're right. Is it? I never yeah, I read the rules at the beginning. I, think, I believe it's the most boring person wins. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wins right, 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 right. Whoever has the no most. Offense. Yeah, no offense. No <laughs> offense. Admittedly. I guess at this point, it doesn't ma matter. I shouldn't read the rules now because it's too. <laughs> Greg has two, he thinks. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, <laughs> we have a winner. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. Ooh, yay, yay. Wait, no, wrong one. Ah! Okay, so Clara, uh, you won. Congratulations. Uh, shoot me an email uh, with whatever email you want me to send you six dollars and sixty six six US dollars. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> It's not as good as the, the mark or the euro at this point, I don't think. But uh, yeah, shoot me your email and um, I will uh, give you $6.66 because the devil. Congratulations on uh, being being as boring as Aaron, apparently. <laughs> uh, thank you both so much for playing this game. What's that? I was telling Clara, thank you for teaming up with me. Yeah. The boring twins over here. Yeah, we'll sorry, William. You live too much. You gotta be. You gotta be more boring to win this game. I, I really do. <laughs> but the thing is, is, you have lived. I mean, it's not like you've sat around okay. knitting your whole life. I mean, you've been you know, no, living like I, a rebel. I, I admittedly do crochet from time to time. You know, but I take it all back. <laughs> There, there needed to be more questions about, you know, things from like the teenage years, and I would have been at zero like immediately. Right. I like got it all out of my system, and you know, now I'm just a boring adult. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually right there with you. I, I don't, <laughs> don't really do anything anymore. I mean, there's the man camps and stuff, but that's not really, mm. that's not really as exciting as it sounds. <laughs> Especially, especially the gay dudes. It's not that. Sorry. It's really not. Uh, so yeah, um, my email, Clara, is info at reverendcampbell.com. Shoot me your info and I'll get you that money. And uh, thank you guys so much for playing. Thank you for tuning in the chat and everyone in the chat. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and stories and engaging. That's what makes this an interesting and exciting experience for everyone. I really do appreciate it. And I'm a massive fan of both uh, Aaron and Jeff here. So both of you, thank you again for uh, joining. Do you want to share any social media information or website info or anything? I'm good. Thank uh, you very much for having me on. Hell yeah. Infernallegion.org. If you are a veteran and a Satanist, make sure you come check us out. Hell yeah. All right. Well, until next time, everyone. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. And that will do it for another shame-filled episode. Join us next time with a game that reminds you, if you want to be a winner, expose yourself to opportunity. I want to stress the word opportunity here and not the public. Rev's still doing community service for that next step. Subscribe and click the bell. Like the video and share it. Then mail out your ransom notes so that next time you are chosen to participate in Speak of the Devil Presents Never Have I Ever.